Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. The folks from Roku sent me their new Roku Express the other day. This is their entry level model that doesn't have any of the bells and whistles of the upper level models. In fact, this one only supports 1080p displays, but there's a lot of value packed into this thing. And what I thought I would do in this video is take a look at some of the things you can do with the entry level Roku. And of course, all the features you see here also work on the higher end ones. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from Roku. However, they are not paying for this review, nor are they reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this entry-level model is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at around $30 at the time I'm recording this video. This is the lowest cost Roku in the product line and will only go up to a 1080p resolution. So if you have a 1080p set or an older 720p set, this is probably all you need to get going. One thing to note with this though, is that the remote control does not control anything other than the Roku in this particular model. So if you wanted a remote that could control your television's volume and power, then you may wanna step up to the Roku Express 4K. And even though you don't have a 4K television, it will work with a 1080p set and that remote offers a little more than this remote does. So if you are looking for a universal remote control along with your Roku, I think stepping up one level is probably going to be cheaper than buying this and then another remote to get it done. But if you don't mind having two remotes around, uh, I think it's always a good place to start with a 1080p set to look at the Express version here. Now there are two ports on the back, and as you can see, I have things plugged in. There is a micro USB connector for power, and an HDMI port for video. And unfortunately, the Roku here doesn't come with a power adapter in the box. You get the power cable, the USB cable, and an HDMI cable, but no plug for the wall. Now, what they recommend that you do is plug the Roku's USB port into a USB port on your television, and then, of course, connect the HDMI cable to an HDMI port on the TV. And that'll probably work most of the time because that USB port on the TV should be able to power the Roku. However, some older TVs are a little temperamental on their USB ports. So you may want to look around and see if you have an old USB phone charger that you can use if the TV doesn't cooperate. And that's just one little thing you'll have to get. Unfortunately, they don't pack them in anymore here. Now, this Roku requires that it be visible to the remote or vice versa here. So you have to keep it in a spot where the front can face the remote when you push the button because this is just an infrared remote. Some of the other Roku models use a radio frequency remote which is a little more flexible. They give you some double-sided tape so you could tape it down to your TV stand down here or tape it upside down on the bottom of your TV. Uh, but no matter what you do, you gotta have it visible to the remote in order for you to use the remote with it when you're navigating around the interface, although there are some alternatives to using the remote, which we'll cover a little bit later in the video. Now, although it's an entry-level device, it feels pretty snappy and certainly will feel a lot better than the old smart TV interface you're likely replacing with this. We'll jump into Netflix here real quick and just see how fast everything loads up. Now, remember, this is only 1080p, so you're not gonna see some of the fancier 4K stuff going on here. By the way, if you do have a 4K set, I would recommend looking at the Streaming Stick 4K, which will support all the different modern HDR modes out there. But we'll just jump in here and just start up a video that I know I can play legally on my channel here. So if we go back over here to search, we'll look for uh, one called Meridian, which is a, a, a Creative Commons thing that they have up here on Netflix. So if we click on that and just resume playing here, we can see uh, how fast everything spins up. This supports five gigahertz Wi-Fi and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, but just note that it's five gigahertz mode doesn't support AC Wi-Fi, just the older uh, wireless N standard, but still for 1080p content, it is more than adequate. And as long as you've got a somewhat decent Wi-Fi connection to where you're placing the device, you shouldn't have any issues streaming here. One of the things that I like about the Roku interface is that even though it is ad supported, it's relatively clean. So you will see some ads off to the side as you're browsing around the menu here, and those will rotate in and out depending on what you're looking at. But by and large, it's a lot cleaner, I think, than the Fire TV interface that uh, embeds ads all over the place. Here, they have a spot for those ads, and they largely stay away from you there. 
The other thing I like about Roku is that it has a very nice free section. So when you take it out of the box and boot it up, if you go into the featured free section here, you can browse around and find a lot of free stuff to watch across a lot of different providers. So already we saw Roku's own channel. We've got Pluto. Uh, NBC has something here as well. These are all ad-supported channels, so you will see advertising running. Uh, but there's so much stuff to watch here on these uh, Roku devices that you never really have to pay for anything to see some content. And there's actually a lot of good stuff on a lot of these channels to check out. So I would definitely spend some time poking around with that to see what you can find. And then, of course, you can install apps like Pluto and, and Plex, which is a sponsor here on the channel, who all offer their own versions of free content, both on demand and streaming. Now, Roku calls their apps channels, and you can find channels in the streaming channels section here. As far as I know at the moment, all of the major streaming providers are available over Roku. Occasionally, they get into a spat with one of the platforms and they threaten to pull the app off, but generally they find a way to settle their differences before that happens. And right now, everything is available here. And you also find a lot of obscure stuff as well because Roku is the market leader and a lot of streaming services, when they're first getting started, often start on Roku just because they have the widest install base. So pop into that channel store and browse around. You can also install channels on the Roku website and when you do that on the computer or phone, it'll find its way over to the Roku to get you going. Now, Roku also has a relatively universal search. So, for example, I just did a search here for Star Trek, and you can see we've got a whole bunch of options for different Star Trek shows. So if I wanted to see where I could watch Deep Space Nine here, for example, I can jump in and see all the seasons that are available, and then it'll tell me where I can watch the show. And as you can see here, it's giving me options to watch it with a subscription along with uh, where I can buy it uh, on a per episode basis. And I say this is sort of universal because it's not inclusive of every service that's out there, but it's inclusive of some of the major ones. And if you wanted a better search, what I use often is a service called Real Good, R-E-E-L-G-O-O-D. They have a website and an app for your phone and their search is a little bit more extensive. And I have to bring up Plex again, our uh, channel sponsor, because they also have a very good search built into their interface also that goes across nearly all of the streaming providers out there. But the Roku interface here is not bad for finding shows that you're looking to watch. But there is a way to squeeze a little more value out of this low-end device here, and you can do that by downloading their mobile app on iOS or Android. And this will actually add some features that you often see on their higher-end models to this lower-end one. So let's pop open the app and see what we can do with it. So here we are on the home screen for the Roku app. And as you can see here, if I go over to Devices, we are connected to our little Roku Express here. Now, if I hit the Remote Control button here, I get a remote control, and this works pretty much like the regular remote works. I can move up and down the interface here. I can select different things to uh, watch or look at, and it works pretty much the same way the remote control does, but I don't need the remote. Additionally, this works over the Wi-Fi, so you don't have to have the Roku Express visible to the physical remote because this works in a different way. So this might be one way to put the Roku where you want it to go. But there's some things that the app adds that I think are really useful. So for example, there's a microphone button here. And if I go up to that microphone and ask it to do something like, find Star Trek The Next Generation, I now have a voice control uh, added to the Roku Express, and this is something it doesn't come with. So we've got something here that can enhance the value of it a little bit, I think, there. So that's pretty neat. The other thing that I like about it is that it also adds a keyboard functionality. So if you are in a screen that requires you to do some text entry, rather than having to go punch it out on the remote, you can just type it out on the phone and it will automatically send the text over to the Roku again over the network. And this might be really helpful when you're trying to log into Disney Plus or something and you have a really crazy password. You can basically type it in with the phone, which is a lot easier, or just cut and paste from a password manager. And I've always found that to work a lot better. So it's really nice that this added value here, I think, works on uh, the Roku Express as it does in all of their other higher end models. Another cool thing you can do, which I think adds even more to the mix here is when you hit the headphone button here. And what this will do is activate private listening mode. So if you have headphones connected to your phone, either over Bluetooth or directly wired in, 
when you activate this mode, all of the sound from the Roku will go through your phone as opposed to the television. So if you wanted to watch TV at night without disturbing a partner, you could basically plug headphones into your phone, activate the private listening mode, and listen to what you're watching that way. And that's a feature that Roku does offer on some of its remotes on the higher end models, but here on the low end one, you can achieve the same thing just by using the app here. Now, one of the cool things about Roku is that it supports AirPlay on Apple devices, and this works even on the low end Express device here. So what you can do with this on your phone, for example, is pull down your little widgets menu here and go over to screen sharing. And if I select my Roku Express here in the basement, uh, what'll happen here is AirPlay will boot up and I will be able to mirror my phone's output to the display here. And you can see now we are uh, all synced up as I move back and forth the interface. There is some latency with this, so I wouldn't use this for gaming. But one of the fun features of this is that if you have photos or videos on your phone, you just send it over via AirPlay, tap on a video that you want to play, and it will play full screen on the Roku as you're going here. And this is a 4K video that it's able to down convert over to 1080p. Here's another video of my brother walking around in the woods. He's a good looking guy, isn't he? Uh, here's this little video I took at the uh, Space Center when we covered the launch of Artemis 1 here. You can also fast forward and rewind so you can get to the parts that you want to see quickly. And it also, of course, works with photos. So here's a photo of my daughter and I on the boat and it even works with zooming in and out and that's all built right in. And it also allows you to AirPlay from your Mac and just mirror its screen to your Roku. So I've got that going right now here with my web browser on my MacBook Air. Again, a little bit of latency, but it's not bad. And of course, you can just mirror the screen here, but I could also uh, start up a keynote presentation, for example, and uh, be able to very quickly get something like this on screen as well. So it really works quite nicely. And this is a feature that is normally just kind of in the more expensive Apple TV device, but this little Roku has it as well. Now the Roku also supports mirror casting, which is available on Windows and on some Android devices. I've got a Surface Laptop Go 2 here, and inside of my display settings is an option to connect to a wireless display. And if your computer supports mirror casting, you will see this as an option. So if I click connect here, uh, what I'll get are a list of items that I can connect to, and I see my Roku Express in the basement right here. So if I click on that, it will attempt to make a connection. And as you can see here, we're getting its special little app loaded up here, and it is starting. And there we go. It will reformat the display so it fits on my 1080p monitor here, and we've got ourselves a full-on uh, Windows interface that I could run my PowerPoint presentations from. Again, it's a little on the uh, lower latency side of things. It's usable, but not so good for gaming. It should be fine, though, for PowerPoints and other things like that. And again, this works on the entry-level Roku here. Now, on the Android side, I found a lot of the phones that I have in my inventory do not support mirror casting natively. They only support streaming to Android TV and Chromecast devices. But there are a number of mirror casting apps that you can download from the Google Play Store to do something similar to what we just did with the Windows computer. But inside of the Roku app, there's actually a way to stream media from the phone wirelessly to the Roku. So if we go back here to devices inside of the Roku app on the phone here, and we go over to media, uh, what we can do, for example, is pull up some videos that I have stored on this Android phone, and I can play them on the Roku. So I'm gonna pick maybe this video of the flower here, I'm tapping on that, and what will happen here in a second or two is it will uh, activate the video on the Roku. Not as fast as what we just saw on the iOS device, but totally usable here, as you can see. And although we don't have the granular media controllers, I can fast forward a little bit if I wanted to get further ahead in the video. I could also stop the video here and select a different one to uh, see something else. So it works pretty good. You can also do photos in this way as well, uh, just not as quick as what I was seeing with the Apple AirPlay feature, but the video eventually will play uh, through an Android phone here. Again, there is Miracast support on Android. However, not every phone supports it natively and might require a third-party app to get it done. Now, some apps on phones allow you to cast video over to the Roku. So for example, I am inside of YouTube right now watching one of my videos. And as you can see, I'm about halfway through it right now. 
And if I go over here to the casting icon, we'll see Roku Express Basement. And if I select that, what will happen here is that the Roku will boot up the YouTube app and start playing the video that we were watching on the phone. And most of the time, it will pick the video up from where you left off. So here we are right where I left off on the phone. And I can actually control the video now from the phone. So for example, this video I embedded chapter markers in. Again, this is in YouTube. And if I wanted to maybe jump back to uh, another section here, I can tap on the chapter for cooling. And it brings me right to that part of the video here just by controlling it via the phone. Unfortunately, not every streaming app that supports Chromecasting is going to work with the Roku. So for example, it does work fine here on YouTube, but Amazon Prime Video, for example, will only work with Android TV and Chromecast devices. But if you have a favorite app that you're watching a video on on your phone and you want to see if it'll cast over, hit that cast icon and see if the Roku pops up. So you can really squeeze a lot out of these little Roku devices, even at the entry level. And if you have an older 1080p or 720p set, you really don't need to go much farther than this one, especially when you pair your phone up with it. I am sure I am missing some features that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, so let me know down in the comments section and maybe we'll do a follow-up video. But all in, I think this is a pretty good value for what you can extract from it. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.